Die Schüler einer der am Film preferito della classe, perché? Allora, partendo dal presupposto che ci sono piaciuti tutti i film. Non è un film illegale, perché siamo stati in un luogo dove vivono i miei preferiti film erano Shun Li e il Poet, o Io sono Li. Abbiamo imparato i meccanismi delle comunità cinesi e di come il pregiudizio nei confronti dello straniero si è incontrato, ma soprattutto, grazie a tutto il film, abbiamo imparato qualcosa riguardo l'immigrazione. I have been voted the best boys in the class, so I'm going to want to say hello there in London. Excuse me, George, you know that I have the best boys of the class. Hello there in London. Our favorite film was Academia Performance. You were seen as really inspiring. It was during the third film, the father was having a shower while uh, his daughter was sat down on the toilet. We like it uh, illegal and insolently for the same reasons, although the plot were different. Uh, we felt connected to it in a sentimental way. <laughs> <laughs> We really enjoyed the project and uh, it gave us the opportunity to discover some amazing European films that we probably wouldn't have discovered otherwise. So, Thank you for the opportunity and thank you for listening. Okay, this should give you some clues about this project. It, this is a mm, multi-language film literacy media literacy project that uh, was activated last year uh, in secondary schools in eight European countries. Uh, my name is Federico Spoletti. I'm the, the founder of the FRED Festival Insider, who the, was the main um, partner involved in this project. And uh, at my, on my left hand side, we have Nevina Satta, from uh, um, Sardinia Film Commission, the main sponsor of the project. Without Sardinia, it wouldn't be very difficult. Thank you. And uh, we are supposed to have Giorgio Cosetti here that apparently is coming. And we have one of the teachers who embraced the project uh, and uh, actually uh, in, in made it very successful in, in her school. I'm talking about uh, Sandra Muzzolini, who will talk about her experience with the project later on. And uh, then we, we have a number of people involved in this project in, in the last year. We have the international general coordinator, Isabella Weber, that I know you know, uh, because <laughs> she's also uh, managing uh, the, the, uh, most of the, all the guys from uh, 28 Times Cinema who are in, in, here in in Venice this year, and we have a few um, national coordinators, Gonzalo Suarez Lopez, that you probably know already, uh, Simone Moraldi, the Italian coordinator, and, um, and uh, who am um, 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 Benedict Prot, where is Benedict? She's coming probably is later. Uh, is, is she around? Yeah. No. Not yet. No, we, we have uh, uh, Nicolo Comotti, who is going to talk later on about his experience in the project. He was one of the 28 a couple of years ago, so uh, it's nice to have Nicola here as well. And, uh, and then we have some of the partners coming later during the day. Uh, you, I don't know if you, if you know already what FRED is. FRED is an international multilanguage radio station broadcasting from film festivals and promoting um, independent cinema uh, from film festivals all over the world. We have at the moment 29 different channels, 25 are language channels, and uh, four are specific theme channels. So we have an industry channel, an educational channel, an extra channel that we use to broadcast press conferences and uh, workshops and seminars, and then an entertainment channel for, for light entertainment. We're broadcasting live, for example, here from London uh, every afternoon in English and in Italian. And um, this project um, was a, a, is a cooperation of a number of partners. 
there are 13 European uh, partners. Three of them are universities. One is the University of Roehampton in London. Then we have the University uh, Universitat Autonoma of Barcelona and uh, the larger university in Romania called Babes Boliai. And then it, it is co-founded by Creative Europe in its first edition. Creative Europe covers 60% of the cost. And then we have a VOD platform, My Movies, very well known VOD platform here in Italy. And um, Cinema d'Orel, a documentary film festival in Paris. Giornata degli Autori, Venice Days. And uh, uh, Subti Access, who made all the versions of the film accessible because this is a totally inclusive uh, project with all the content made accessible for the sensory disabled audiences. Uh, HRT, who is who's the national um, broad uh, Croatian broadcasters, and uh, Subti, who did the uh, interlingual versions. Tofra Lamping, uh, who, which is um, an Icelandic organization. Uh, active in, in, in film literacy in Iceland, and uh, Claudio Tomasini and Associates uh, film publicist in, German, in Germany. And um, as I mentioned already before, uh, the, the um, Friday School is possible also thanks to uh, Regione Sardegna and Sardegna Film Commission. And Nevina is here to talk about that later on. We had already a closing event, a first closing event in London on the 2nd of uh, uh, July, and um, it, it was a, a very long presentation that lasted more than two hours. We just edited out five minutes. I, I just wanted to, to let you see uh, what came out from, from that presentation. We, we had a couple of uh, member of parliaments and some uh, film literacy experts that are, uh, told us what they thought about the project, and I thought it was quite interesting to let you know about that as well. Very pleased to be here to welcome you to today's um, celebration of Fred at School. Um, it is my job to tell you about Creative Europe, what Creative Europe is and what it does, and that will hopefully help uh, to place this project in a wider context. Now we can offer funding to uh, professionals active in the fields of film education, film literacy, um, audience development, and Fred at School is, is, is one of those projects. Well. It's obvious for us all working in the industry that growing audiences, developing that taste for cinema from early years in someone's life is crucial. A lot of good work is going on in different European countries and a lot of good practice is um, there to uh, incentivize people to work across borders on common projects, exchanging best practice, learning from one another, working together. So Fred at School is one of those supported projects and today we'll find out much more about it. The aim of the material was to convey uh, the basics of film literacy to, to students, to secondary school students. Uh, so we divided the topics as you can see them on the screen. Um, the main challenge for us was to um, adapt the materials to the radio uh, because this is um, materials about film language which have audiovisual content and then we're, we're thinking about how to convey that acoustically, so only through audio. But uh, what we found out later was that the teachers got, were engaged in, in the um, delivery of the material in different ways. So some, some teachers, for example, were supporting the uh, radio clips with some images. And what we did is for every one of those sections, we created not only the content for the radio clips, but also we supported uh, the teacher's unit, which had links and different activities, as well as questions, so that it could be um, used by the teachers uh, in a more interactive way with the students. Uh, it's fantastic to be here, um, seeing that this project has, uh, is really pushing the boundaries in terms of what we might talk about regarding languages. The Parliament believes that cinema, a mass cultural medium, can be an ideal vehicle for debate and reflection on Europe and its future. Production of adapted versions for visually and hearing impaired people. Fred at School is a wonderful, inclusive project with films made accessible to visual and hearing impaired audiences. And this is of interest to me, not for all the reasons that have, uh, not just for all the reasons that have already been said, but also because I'm a children's rights champion and I advocate for the rights of um, excluded, marginalized children and young people. 
Young people are the citizens of tomorrow, so providing them with critical thinking and intercultural skills is crucial in order to enable active citizens who can become ambassadors for democracy. And uh, Fred in School is really the connecting situation of that. I'm so proud of what you have achieved uh, throughout already the first year. This is really amazing through you and the whole team. I know what it's all about. So I would like to take this with me now here from you and the experiences of the teachers to bring uh, more uh, Fred in School to Germany. Because this is the Fred School is the only initiative uh, I'm known of, and that's why we gladly participate, to help with other platforms, be it radio, TV, or what other platforms, to promote uh, any kind of literacy throughout our schools and, and enrich uh, national, international curricula. How important is it to select the right films? I mean, obviously these films are selected from the Lux Prize, which are quite, uh, you know, they, they're curated to entertain as well, but also to instruct. They're very, they're very hard hitting. Once they saw that their students overcame their fear of subtitled films, I think that's a, an interesting experience that Fred has brought up. You know, it took four films before they got to that position whereby, yeah, right, we're looking forward to this, we've, we've overcome all of the issues around, not just European film, but any subtitled film. And it reminded me that it, young people don't always need to see films which feature young people. If the stories are powerful and dramatic, they will engage with them. Um, and also, they don't always need to see films that are based in their own neighbourhood, their own culture, their own society. They're, young people, like the rest of us, are curious. Human beings are curious animals. And to show, uh, to give opportunities to find out other things about the world, I think film does that better than any other medium. We just have to trust young people that they will engage with films so long, so long as they're well made. They have to be well made, powerful stories with engaging characters and then young people will, will, will watch and enjoy. Uh, and there are a couple of dimensions I think in here which are uh, worth connecting to um, Fred at school. One of them is the importance of wider engagement with film and that's in order to develop one's film literacy then being curious, being adventurous, choosing things that you might not have, or have chosen before. Um, I think for, it seems that, that Fred at School has done that really, really well. Um, it takes time. Four viewings of four different films over a, a school year, I, th I think that's absolutely the, the way to do it. The second dimension is that, that we've got in here is the importance of developing a critical response, a, a sense of your own your likes and dislikes and tastes and judgments and your confidence in engaging with and, and speaking about that. And, and Fred, at, Fred at School has done that as well, I think. It's made the environment social, it's made exchanges possible between young people, and they've shown that they really value that, and that they develop in their confidence and their ability to articulate what they're en enjoying, and what they're learning, and what they're understanding as, uh, uh, through, through films that they might not have chosen otherwise. <laughs> Okay, just to let you know that we are very proud of this project and, and uh, there are someone external of it that actually appreciated it. And you saw in, in, in the, 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 the last person who was talking is uh, Mark Reed, the head of education at the British Film Institute. Before him there was um, Jan Wall, founder of Film Education and the Film Space. Then you, in order from the beginning, um, the first speaker was Agnes Camus, the head of uh, Creative Europe in London. And then uh, we had uh, um, Julie Ward, a member of European, the European Parliament in the UK, and Arne Leeds, a member of the European Parliament in uh, Germany. And, and uh, Pablo Romero Fresco from Roehampton University. Uh, most of the features of the project probably came out from, from this uh, short edited video. Anyway, to let you know very quickly what we are talking about for the school is a, is a, a film educational project uh, that was, was um, as I told you before, funded, supported by Creative Europe in a new call that was launched last year. It's called Audience Development. And uh, um, it's addressed to secondary schools. Uh, the target age are 14 to 16 years old, and it was activated in a number of countries. The original uh, project was supposed to cover all 24 European languages, but we activated it in the first edition uh, in, uh, for, for, for eight different countries in nine languages, because we have a minority language as well, which is Sardinian. And, uh, and um, screenings have been organized in schools through a VOD platform. 
Uh, my movies uh, develop a specific platform that allows students to uh, watch films in the classroom together with, with their schoolmates and teachers. And uh, before that, we developed some film literacy material that was written by the film literacy partner. There are a number of film literacy experts uh, among the partner. Uh, one is uh, Venice Days, then we have uh, Roehampton University and uh, Ayace Torino. Probably I, I forgot to mention Ayace Torino before, uh, which is a very well-known organization in, in Turin. Uh, that manages also a, a young a, a, a film festival for, for young audiences, very well known here in Italy, called Sotto di Ciotto. And um, um, the, the, it's a film literacy project, but at the same time, it's also a, a, a media literacy project, or specifically a, a radio literacy project, because well, th there is no doubt that. Uh, radio can be a very effective tool in education because in the past it was used to disseminate information and for education, but on the other hand, in, a acti in an active way, the, the broadcasting experience in itself can be a very effective way to, to, to learn. And um, uh, so we, we thought that it could be, it, it, it was a good idea to, to put together radio and films. Of course, we are a radio station, so we wanted to, to involve our structure in that. And, and actually, it was a very good way to promote the radio on one side and to find the young correspondents on the other side. And um, um, we, so we, we created some film literacy material in the end, in, in the beginning, sorry, some basic film literacy material. Well, then I'll, I'll show you uh, a little bit later on. And uh, then this material was translated in all the languages in the, of the project and was transformed in audio format so students could listen to some information through the radio or in podcasts. And then uh, they saw four different films uh, during the school year, actually during a part of the school year because we started very late in, in from, from December or January to uh, end of May. And after the screenings, uh, they, they created some radio content explaining uh, or telling uh, about their, their perspe the perspective of the, of the films. And one, because the, the, the initial aim of the project is to understand if the same film is perceived in different way in different countries with different cultures. It's something that probably we all see if we travel from a film festival to another. The same film shown in Locarno makes, uh, or anyway, you see people with some sort of reaction. I remember a specific film, a Greek film called The Blast. In, in Locarno, everyone was crying. I've seen the same film in Sarajevo. Everyone was laughing <laughs> a lot. So I, I thought it was in, could, could have been an interesting thing to, to create a, a radio content explaining and, and listening to the different uh, perception and reaction of the students. Uh, as I told you, it's a film literacy uh, and a media literacy project. And one, one thing I want just to stress is that all the content that we create remain available for everyone. So we create radio content um, about film literacy that of course is addressed for to students but it it remains available <coughs> sorry in iTunes podcast for everyone and at the same time all the accessible content that we create audio description for the blind and uh, subtitle for for the uh, hearing impaired for the deaf um, actually remains available for everyone who is interested it's available on a on a VOD uh, sorry on a um, uh, apps, uh, smartphone application, and everyone who's interested in seeing that films, those films can see them with subtitles or with audio description. And so we, we, we create a, an action that actually is more effective than uh, among the schools only. The films, uh, as was mentioned by Julie Ward in the video and by um, the expert you saw in the video before, uh, are um, selected by the Lux Prize. I, I'm sure you know what the Lux Prize is. It's a wonderful uh, film competition uh, promoted and supported by the European Parliament that every year uh, in the, from the last eight years selects uh, 10 films, 10 European films who are particularly interesting under the film literacy aspect, but also for the content and the, the topic they, they deal with. And, uh, um, which are not maybe the, the specific films that usually are used in film education, and, but they are very, very actual current in terms of content. And, uh, and I think 
maybe Sandra can say that later uh, better than me, but um, in the schools, uh, they were very effective also because they allowed a sort of a, of a trans, trans, uh, not, trans topical <laughs> thing, and, uh, and they could have been used for, for other topics as well. And um, about the selection of, of the films, uh, we, we, we should have here uh, Giorgio Gosetti, so he's going to tell a little bit later on. Anyway, we created a sort of a, of a um, scientific committee that was led by Giorgio with some teachers and uh, some experts in, in film rights. One of the most difficult aspects of the project was dealing the film, with, the, with the film rights. And uh, we selected four films. Uh, and um, one was uh, a, a, a Belgian film, Illegal, and then we had uh, a Greek film, Academia Platinos, an Italian film, Yusunoli, and a Swedish film, um, Atta Sopa, I don't remember the, the original title, and uh, uh, It's Lip Die. Um, just to let you see very quickly the VOD platform, we had uh, different events, the, the different schools could, could uh, log in, and then we created a sort of a, of a virtual huge theater, and the original idea was to have all the students logged in, seeing the film on the same day in all the European countries involved. And that was, to be honest, very difficult because uh, school calendars in different European countries are quite difficult different and then we also started rather late so it was that was wasn't an easy task but maybe Isabella will explain <laughs> later that better than me just to give you an idea of sorry of the content we created the, the, the about the basic of film literacy uh, we, we this gives you an idea from the website of Fred of the different topics we covered and um, and we, we created a huge amount of multi-language uh, audio text, and then uh, Nicola will talk uh, about that very quickly. Uh, the countries where the project took place were eight. It, um, in the UK, uh, Italy, Iceland, uh, France, Spain, Germany, um, Croatia. And then we had uh, Romania, sorry, and then we had the Sardinia as well as, a, as a, an experimental uh, aspect of the, of the project with minority languages, which is one where, where, where we are going. And the, uh, parallel to the project, there was also a film literacy uh, um, research that was conducted by UAB, University of Barcelona. Uh, the students have been um, investigated in a way before the, the project and then after each screening and then at the end of the screening just to um, understand what their reaction were and, uh, and also to, to measure the effect the, of the project from the beginning to the end. And uh, most of the data are still uh, in, 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 um, being processed at the moment, so there will be a, a publication later on just uh, to let you know uh, the sort of questionnaires they, they had to, it was a, an online questionnaire uh, just after the screenings and, uh, and one of the end. And among, the, in the last question, of the last questionnaire, uh, students have been asked to, to vote their favorite film and uh, uh, tonight, as you probably know, at 6.30 at Villa degli Autori, we are going to have an awards, small awards ceremony to the winning film that uh, I think we can say about that because it's been said already. The winning film is an Italian Chinese film called uh, uh, Sun Li uh, and the Poet, Io sono lì, by Andrea Segre, who actually uh, presented his film originally in Venice Days a few years ago. So I think it's also an interesting thing that it was voted. Just to give you an idea of, of the research that has been conducted by the University of Barcelona the, from, from very pre preliminary tests, and the students have been asked about this topic, uh, if they like the experience, if they liked uh, watching the film with their schoolmates, uh, uh, what they, what's the most interesting aspect of the project. Uh, what I like here is 68.2% uh, uh, recording the radio program, so the fact that we put together film literacy and radio worked very well, and then uh, 
what we have been what we, we have been told many many times is that this project works very well if they are engaging with the students and the fact that uh, they had to create radio content in the classroom uh, apparently engaged them rather rather well they were rather shy maybe in the beginning but just if we if you listen to the program from film one to film four uh, the, 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 the the progression is, is, I think, really, really incredible, and they, they were very casual and very easy in talking to the microphone and telling about the films later in, 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 in a few months, actually. So that worked very well. Um, I'd like uh, to call uh, Nicolò Comotti here for uh, a few comments about his huge activity as well. As I told you, uh, Nicolò Comotti uh, comes from from the 28 Times Cinema Project. He's a young filmmaker as well. He's one of the pillars of Fred Film Radio. Uh, and, um, yeah, and uh, you, you, where are we? Yeah. Don't promote him too much. <laughs> and uh, and Nicolò made a, a huge work listening to, to hundreds of radio programs and trying to uh, understand if actually there was this difference in, in the perception of the film. So Nicolotti, 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 Nicolotti. Nicolotti. Nicolò yes, yes. Comatti, the floor is yours, as I say. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was definitely an interesting year. Oh, sorry. Do you hear me well? No? Yeah. It was definitely an interesting year and a very cool project, also from my side. There was definitely a lot of work. Um, you see that blurred, <laughs> weird thing. That's the kind of the ensemble of the four big reports that I created, each uh, for the, of course, the four films that we shown. And uh, I created seven loose uh, subgroups, film appreciation, um, culture and setting, language, characters, uh, extra experience, and some of us that I actually forgot, but they're all there. And um, that's pretty much the, the kind of the overall uh, report of all the single students all together in a classroom, divided by colors, of course, that correspond to the countries and the schools themselves. Um, the beautiful thing was, of course, that doing so, you can kind of pinpoint uh, the single and stylistic choices that maybe the, the, the students kind of created and, and found out, but also you can see big subgroups within Europe, and for example, Let's take, uh, have you ever seen uh, Arthur Sovador, his slip tie? He actually won International Critics Week um, some, day, uh, some years ago. Um, Russia, she's a very strong character. And uh, if, for example, the French, the Italian, and the Spanish uh, students found her really rude and kind of like not really that likable, um, the students from uh, Finland, sorry, from uh, Iceland and uh, and Croatia actually found her very, very engaging, a sort of a solid character. Same goes with uh, Illegal. Um, most of the northern European countries didn't know anything about that kind of experience. Whereas, for example, the southern Eastern Europe kind of had this sort of ongoing ghosts coming back from a very recent past, you know, the Balkan Wars, of course. Um, so that was really interesting, seeing these sort of topics coming about. In a, in a very pan-European project, of course, because as the first year it was eight different countries all together creating new content. But probably the most interesting thing for me also, uh, because I didn't have the chance, of course, when I was 14 or 15 to watch these kind of films, was to see, as Federico said earlier, the progress, the, the ridiculously fast progress with which uh, the students approached filmmaking, both at film viewing and also new ideas of film literacy. So if, for example, the first kind of programs, it was just like, I didn't like it at all. It was very boring, static. Then you kind of see and you progress from uh, Illegal to Yosun Lee. Yosun Lee was in fact the last one. You can see also that if the students didn't like the film, they were not stopping there. They were kind of going forward. They were asking themselves what the director wanted to do, which is a really, really big step forward into the terms of watching films. So you don't just look at things as high expectations, but you're also trying to understand what was the uh, making of, the behind the scenes, the, the also the vehicle with which uh, um, a director wants to express something. And in fact, Yusun Ali, which was also the, the favorite, favorite ones, was the most well received, but the, um, um, the overall reviews were fantastic, really, really insightful. You could see the psychological and emotional different intertwining, intertwinings with all the different characters. So it was, Pretty astonishing, I think, in just the, the arc of, what, four or five months altogether. And um, what can I say again? Well, this was, of course, the first year, 
and uh, you know we we started a bit rushed it wasn't of course meant to be like that but if in a rushed way we managed to do so much I'm pretty sure that you know for the second year we can do pretty well right yeah Let's I hope, hope so. so good yeah, I hope so thank you Nicola and um, meanwhile uh, Giorgio Gosetti is here if someone can give him a mic I like him to say something I already told you almost everything you were supposed to say mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So I talk already about the, the, the film selection from the Lux Prize and how it works. And of course, when we went to Georgia, I was very happy because it's, it's a guarantee because it's, it's a guarantee that we have a, an eye. That to congratulate this panel because everyone is Italian and everyone this panel because everyone is Italian and everyone speaks in English. So a very good one. So <laughs> that's Europe. Why not? Um, secondly, I'm really, really happy because when you mention a selection, a sure selection of a good films, I'm really proud that one of them is a Venice Days film. And I'm really proud also because the all three others you mentioned, uh, I was really involved in, I really wanted to have in our section in Venice, unfortunately for very different reasons, they were elsewhere, but uh, these are some of my favorites, so as a personal touch, as a personal choice, I'm really, really happy of your examples. And it's true, when we talked a lot about the quality of selection, the main problem was really this. Which kind of movie can be appreciated and understood in so different cultures in the same culture? So uh, the crucial theme is what is Europe in this kind of terms? Are we sharing the same experiences? Maybe yes today, for instance. If you open the, day, the papers today, you feel that there is, at least at the political level, a common urgency, a common need. I'm not sure it will be the same for the people. Uh, and maybe in this case, cinema could be a very good vehicle. Um, so I think that you, you said a lot of things about the quality of selection and the criteria of selection. But it's true that uh, when we approach these kind of things, uh, we really have to balance different instances, different ideas. Um, we're not a cine club. We're not a film academy. We have to use films for the quality of themselves and for different reasons. Uh, so to find the good film who is able to speak to everyone in different aspects with different perspectives, it's the most important thing. And this is much more interesting when we are dealing with an European film instead of an American one or even an Asian one. Because you can introduce and present the films under very different perspectives according to the audience, which is not for the Americans, yeah. for instance. This is the main advantage of American film and the main disadvantage, if you want, the main problem they can have. So it was really interesting and it's very logical that the Venice Days are partners of Fred. Uh, I think we have to continue in the future and by the way, during these days we will encourage a public debate, which is very Italian, about the importance to introduce cinema in uh, the Italian school. And introduce cinema in the Italian school doesn't mean um, to explain how to be good editors, good directors, good screenwriters. It explains, it deals about how to be good spectators, how to be good citizens. So this is absolutely the same idea of Fred. Yeah. So we are really much more involved in this kind of project and in this kind of idea or utopia maybe that concerns the future of Europe. Thank you. Uh, it's nice to see that you are not leaving us <laughs> for the next, for the future. And, uh, and you know that we are all at the Villa degli Autori tonight at 6.30 because there will be uh, a reception, which usually <laughs> helps, <laughs> and an award um, ceremony. And we already mentioned who the winner is because the, the, the news has been published already. So we, we are giving the award. To, to Andrea Segre. And I'd like to have here very quickly uh, the, the uh, national coordinators things. <laughs> and I'd like to have Isabella Weber. <laughs> and I'd like to have 
<laughs> and I'd like to have Isabella Weber, who was the general coordinator, who was the general coordinator, and and uh, and also. And and uh, and also to, to leave and come back. It's not. It's not very nice. And back. It's not. It's not very nice. And of course, I'm I'm sending you away as well. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. People involved in this project. You know, project like this. You rely on this project. You know, project on very motivated teachers, and we've been lucky with that. Very motivated teachers, and we've been lucky with that. And also with very. Okay, and uh, we, we the, the structure was very easy. We have different nine actually different um, nine actually different um, national coordinators. Isabella Weber had to manage all this. So, Isabella, if you want to say something, I have here. You, you, I know, you, I know my chicken, so I thought it was a very good idea to bring the sort of. I was given three minutes, no. so I will be very, very, very short. Okay. Um, when uh, Federico first uh, introduced me, the project asking me to join, I thought, okay, this is completely crazy. We have uh, eight different countries, uh, nine different languages, and we're going to be showing films uh, subtitled to such a young audience. And um, but we made it. So this is, uh, I think, uh, it, it's amazing. It was a very um, courageous project, and at some level, it was very hard to coordinate because when we talk about Europe, uh, we are actually talking about very different kind of. Uh, it was uh, it was very very difficult uh, locally at the same time. It was very very difficult. It was very very difficult. It was very very. It was very, very difficult at the same time, thanks to the, the same time, thanks to the same time, the same time, thanks to, and uh, even uh, we were, and uh, even uh, we were mentioned, we, in the beginning we also had to, in the beginning we also had to deal with the, the all the national distributors. So imagine you have a full language he, each has uh, eight different. Um, you have to work it out as you go. And but I think you have to work it out as you go. And but I think these kind of projects also really need uh, um, uh, or really help the film industry to uh, what its audience is. I think uh, the audiences. I think uh, the, uh, the filmmakers uh, managed to have their films shown to an audience that they would have never reached otherwise. And uh, the students, uh, for most of the students we worked with, uh, it was their first time watching a, a subtitle film, which can be a huge difference. So in the beginning it was very hard even to get them engaged with the film itself because they're not used to reading subtitles. I mean, if you come from a country where this is uh, normal, it sounds a bit ridiculous, but even for, in Italy, for example, all films are dubbed. <laughs> so subtitles are something that it's really related to some obscure small films that are, doesn't seem so uh, attractive. But by the second, third, and fourth screening, they didn't even realize they were reading subtitles. So I think this is amazing. And uh, even uh, with, the, with the radio contents, we had the same thing as Nicolas was mentioning before. Um, in the beginning, students, I mean, 14 years old, were not used to uh, express themselves about films to think about them in a more um, wide way. And uh, but we we had so really incredible progress by by the end of the project. But what I think it's really essential for this kind of uh, super complicated project is to have some continuity, because there it is <laughs> continuity. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, but you know uh, <laughs> timing is everything. And from Isabella Weber, we go to Gonzalo Suarez Lopez, the coordinator in uh, Spain, okay, who hello. actually managed to get the most visibility of all of us because you, you went to national television. Yeah. We are all very envious, envious you know. <laughs> I know. 
Uh, yeah, like um, the main task for national coordinators was actually to engage two sides of the project, which was firstly the students, because the project is like building up from scratch something that they didn't have in the schools, and the schools also have no time to include uh, non-curricular projects. So we had to seduce teachers, teachers had to seduce students, and then they had to create and evaluate content that they were not used to. Fil um, European films, subtitled films, drama, which is a kind of a genre that they don't uh, actually consume in, in, in theaters usually. And then on the other side we had, uh, at least I tried to also use the national programs that we have to uh, create after each screening to kind of involve into the project different experts and uh, film literacy people and film professionals to this kind of initiative, a film literacy, lit film literacy initiative that is actually needed by the public because we, we study literature, we study music, but we don't study film and we don't know how film works and how that language is actually produced and consumed. So, yeah, the thing is that um, uh, the television show and then the national TV broadcaster that I uh, took part in it is actually part of that interest. I pitched the project to, um, to a producer in, in one of the programs of the national TV broadcaster, Televisión Española, and they accepted it because they, th they found it was interesting as, as much as, as, as we thought. So a, a part of the national coordinator, at least my job, was actually that, trying to um, get the students involved, trying to get uh, film experts involved. And the result is that uh, you know, after this first edition, we have a lot of schools actually asking for uh, the participation and the re-edition of the project so that we can actually enlarge our audience. Very good. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Gonzalo. It was, it was very clear. I'm, I'm very sorry, we have to rush a little bit, but we will be at the Venice Days Villa tonight from 6.30, so if you are interested about anything, come there and you can also eat something. Uh, I'm going to Benedict Pro, the coordinator in France. And meanwhile, I'll, I'll, I'll ask Gonzalo to leave the seat together again to Sandra, please. Yes. Hello, everybody. So I'm Benedict Pro. I was the French coordinator of uh, the project, and uh, as uh, I want to um, to uh, stay with something that was said before, is that we don't give people the credit, the kids the credit, enough credit. They do not necessarily want films uh, that are really easy to understand. And I was really happy because the schools I I managed to get involved were a school from the suburbs. Where I had a professional school, kids who study car mechanics, and who in fact. Uh, for most of them, didn't speak for, uh, fr even French uh, four years ago. So for them, it was really a discovery of European culture, and they were really flattered to be included in a project like this. Uh, they were not used; they're not people who already have art option and everything. So they were uh, very engaged. And I wish we had more time to um, develop the social media and dialogue part of it. But uh, as uh, it was mentioned, uh, we had little time to do this. Uh, one thing also that I think is, is really important is uh, to underline the fact that we did not give them uh, indication as, a, as, a, as, as what they should think about the movies. Because we use the radio medium, because we asked them to produce those little programs, they had to be proactive in their, the way they apprehended the movie, and that allowed them to also go beyond their initial impression, even when the movie, like Eat, Sleep, Die, for instance, uh, wasn't, uh, was, was quite uh, difficult to, to understand. I mean, and because of our choice of movies, they, they uh, got into a really interesting debate, and a really clever debate about realism, and, and whether a film should be realistic or it shouldn't, and they went further than I even thought they would be. So they would go. So, and this was without us even uh, suggesting anything, you know? So that was really interesting. And I think it's really important for them to have a critical mind because without going into anything too heavy, uh, images have become really important. And it's important, or sentence to, it's important to remember that an image, a sentence, a film, anything can mean everything. For instance, uh, I don't know, uh, I've mailed, uh, I've made an omelette. Uh, I'm, I'm taking a light example. It can mean, I remember that you don't eat meat. I, it can mean, I have nothing in the fridge. It can mean that my uh, allow allowed time is almost over. <laughs> I don't know. It yeah. can mean lots of things. And right. they are able to understand that. And they did it on their own. Just uh, because Thank of you. the way. Thank yeah. you, Benedict. You have been wonderful in the project, I have to say that. And uh, I'd like to mention uh, 
just very quickly, the other, the other coordinators before giving the, the, the floor to Simone, because they may listen online on Fred, and uh, I'm talking about Nick Walker, the national coordinator in the UK, Katerina Weber in Germany, and Kodruta Barb in Romania, and Nella Gudeli in Croatia, and now uh, Simone Moraldi, Italian coordinator. Thank you, Federico. Uh, hello, everybody. When I first came to know and Federico came to me with this proposal of, for this project, I was very happy because I'm, I'm engaged in film literacy since a little less than 10 years. I've been working in several projects in my career on film literacy and I was very happy to see that there were some people in Europe interested in film literacy, especially coming, not someone that didn't come from the film literacy sector because uh, receiving a, a uh, when I knew about the radio, a web radio on film, on cinema, that wanted to make a proposal like this, I was very happy because there was something that was sensitive to film literacy. So I guess uh, we, we, we could be able to go forward in the future. Uh, very quickly, in Italy, 13, uh, 12, 12 uh, schools took part of the project. There were different types of schools, and I would like to mention in particular some schools that were um, a kind of a specific school that we have in Italy since 2010, that is the Fine Arts High School, because in 2010 there was a school reform at the national level, and a new uh, curriculum was introduced, and it's this uh, audiovisual and multimedia curriculum in which there are several uh, hours every week on film and audiovisual. So it was, for my, from my point of view, a huge revolution for the school system in Italy, and I wanted to involve so many schools of this type in the project because uh, I believe that they could give a good effort to it. I, it was also an, an occasion for me to experience myself as a radio speaker because thanks to uh, Fred I was uh, able to have my first experience as a radio speaker and it was amazing and was very happy and I want to mention Laura Buffa which is yeah. the, this, the Italian uh, um, uh, anchor woman of the, of the national radio programs we made a uh, radio program for every film uh, in which we included all the files that were produced by the schools and I, it was amazing to see the progress they made in, during the project. I just want to summarize everything I would like to say about their progress because the, the most important switch they made, the students made in their mind, was to change from uh, uh, an approach like, ha, huh, what did the, the director do in this scene? I would have done this differently and then they changed and started to ask themselves why the director did like this. So there was a change of mind from an approach like, mm, I, would like I, I don't like this, I would have done it differently. And they changed it and said, why did they do this? That's the base of film literacy. Thank you. You, you, you didn't even need it, this. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you very much to Simone. I forgot to mention the Icelandic coordinator, Odni Seng and Sorun Njartadottir. And uh, uh, as I said to you, before, we've been very lucky with the coordinators because they work really very, very hard for, for a fee that was not really adequate, probably, for what they did. And, uh, and they really were very, very dedicated also in creating radio programs. They were very, very interesting. You know, uh, any, for each school, uh, we had one radio program for each film, and then we had, uh, the national coordinator arranged a national radio program comparing all the comments coming from the schools, and then we had an international radio program in English. Everything was also in English. They did the program in, in their language and in English. And also we had an international radio program that was managed by Nicola actually analyzing all the content, so they, they made a, a huge job. But projects like this, as I said before, couldn't work uh, if we, you don't rely on uh, uh, extraordinary, wonderful, dedicated teachers, and uh, I'm very happy we have one here. <laughs> and I'm talking uh, of uh, Sandra Muzzolini, who is going to say something about her experience. Thank you, Federico. Well, I, I think it wasn't that difficult to seduce me into joining this, uh, this project because I love uh, cinema and so probably do all the other teachers involved in it. But uh, I also understood that it was quite difficult because it was something completely new. So we saw it as a sort of challenge for the students uh, but for the teachers as well. Um, as you have seen, we have worked with the students of uh, around 16 years of age and um, 
you probably know that these uh, boys and girls are quite impatient. They are called digital goldfish because their attention span is really limited, shorter than in goldfish indeed. Certainly shorter than in grown-ups or in general in people who consciously go to the cinema because they want to. So the first challenge was this, to make them uh, sit down quietly for two hours uh, with no remote control in their hands to make a pose or to stop the screening if they want it. And given the, the context and the presence of their teachers, of course, also no possibility to talk uh, and to exchange comments, uh, uh, which is what they like doing when they go to the cinema and we can't understand why. Um, but, uh, but it worked. Um, I think that the project met the objectives uh, that, were, uh, that were given at the beginning and uh, um, we, we, we really um, could see that uh, if we uh, find a way to engage uh, students and to give them the responsibility of their process of learning, they get uh, to, to the target. So uh, what, uh, what were the other challenging aspects of, uh, of the project? Certainly, um, the, the fact that uh, the film says it, it has been remembered were uh, subtitled, and this is something uh, they are not used to. Uh, then they were, in general, confronted with a kind of cinema that they are not familiar with. They are used to Hollywood productions. And uh, also the, the theme chosen for the, for the project was quite uh, demanding, okay? Immigration is a, a complex problem. Um, but uh, the results were good, I think, uh, beyond my expectations. In, uh, in a short period, I could see that their approach to films uh, evolved and they, um, they learned how to, to look at films. So they could uh, uh, realize that uh, uh, there can be in a film uh, more than you can see by, by yourself. And uh, this was because I think, well, what worked from this point of view was uh, the interaction, the fact that they shared the experience of watching the film together with their friends. And uh, so they had to discuss about it and to find a way to, um, to, to understand why uh, you can have different per perspectives. And uh, you, you, you learn that you can't simply uh, say, I like uh, this or I don't like this. Uh, you must explain why this is the fundamental uh, thing you have to learn. So in, uh, in the moment in which you try to, to find words, to give voice to, to your ideas, to your feelings, uh, of course you understand them more clearly and also you learn to communicate them more effectively to, to your friends. So I think that for all these reasons, uh, yes, the experience has been challenging, but also rewarding for the students uh, as well as for the teachers. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you very much. And uh, we are running a little bit late, so I I'll ask uh, Benedict to leave the seat to Navina Sata, please. And uh, just to tell you very quickly uh, what has been said already, this was also an accessible project, which means that for all the films that we created, uh, subtitles for the deaf and the hearing impaired. So there were interlingual subtitling because films ha has been presenting in the original language. And then we created also subtitles for the deaf with additional information for the deaf uh, about the identification of the characters, uh, music, uh, sounds, and all that kind of information. And then we created audio description for, for the blind, and uh, which means uh, description in the dialogue poses, there is an extra voice that explains what happens in the scene and uh, all this accessible content was available uh, through a, um, a smartphone application which synchronizes automatically with the audio coming from the film.
term. So uh, also students with the sen with the sensory disabilities could uh, embrace the project together with with their schoolmates. And also this content, as I said before, remains available available for all the categories of the sensory disabled. You know, it's it's not. Uh, uh, and we're not talking about small numbers here. One person in seven has some kind of sensory disability. It's a percentage that is growing on with the, with the average age that is growing. So uh, I think that it's a very interesting uh, aspect of the project that actually made Fred the School unique under this point of view. And, uh, um, and one thing that we actually achieved to do, I think, for the first time was creating audio description and audio subtitling as well, because of course a blind, uh, blind audience can't read subti uh, subtitles, so we had a sort of voiceover as well with, uh, that is called audio subtitling, and we, did, we managed to do that in nine languages, and uh, uh, that the, the Italian, English, French, German, Spanish, uh, Icelandic, and Croatian, and Romanian, and then also a minority language. Minorities language minority languages is one of the, of the field line that Fred is going at the moment. You know that uh, these endangered languages actually um, need to have visibility on on internet. Fred is a, an internet radio. We give them a sort of a, of a platform to to promote the language. But to talk a little bit more about this and better than me, uh, uh, I'm giving the floor to Nevina Sata, who is the head of the Sardinia Film Commission, who was very enthusiastic in embracing the project. And we also, before the project, we created a Sardinian channel uh, about film, which is, I think, unique as well. It's unique and it's been a great adventure. And thank you all for believing uh, so, um, in such a determined way that it is possible to change the way we conceive uh, for film literacy, but in general for the film production, the relationship between institutions. I'm here presenting the world of film commissions and on behalf of the Italian Film Commission Association, we keep emphasizing at every opportunity that our job is not simply to be a public institution that works well, but has to be challenging and has to create bridges that don't exist yet. Fred at School is one great opportunity, and uh, we started it in Sardinia, which is, um, you know, we are one of the youngest uh, film commissions in Italy, and what film commissioners do is to build a bridge between the territory and the community and the film world. Um, the, the, the concept you've heard today is extremely innovative, not only for those that um, participate to the workshops, because they uh, experience uh, traditional media content and they learn to use traditional media, the father of traditional media like uh, the radio, with uh, highly, um, let's say, highly uh, challenging new technologies. Not only the apps, but the possibility of creating at the end of the school year uh, startups that develop those uh, applications in the smartphones and the uh, newest platforms. Uh, this has been great for the, uh, the students that were involved, even if they're very young. Uh, Sardinia started very late, so it was crazier than anyone else. And we have ourselves tested also what it means today to have a community that has to handle the relationship with the uh, minority language, which for us has been from the very beginning the language of the heart. So you discovered that people that are in their teenage, they actually speak uh, minority language, they, they speak sardo in our case, when they're at the beach or when they're uh, preparing for the night out. And they don't speak Sardo at school, they don't speak Sardo with their parents, but they relate to it in the, um, let's say, a highly vulnerable emotional situation. Either extreme happiness or extreme frustration and fear. So this is an area where cinema comes in, bringing the possibility of expanding the imagination and the sense of belonging, where the local identity really feels part of a, of a wider identity, and this is why the Lux films are excellent challenges themselves, very hard, very harsh, sometimes really contested by the students. And they do stress the need of a reciprocity of engagement, which is not anymore available when you are just getting 
a 30 second video on your smartphone no matter what. So that is the big test. Understand where the languages are going to and understand how people can feel participated in the process of changing the directions. I think that there is a high symbolical level in this project, which is have the right to find your voice. Have the right to find your way of speaking and expressing and sharing your, your status, your emotion, your identity. Tell the stories of your territories and your community. This is unique, and this has to start so early that one of the reasons why we are engaging with more local communities that have a recognized minority language is that through the youngest generations, we can reach the seniors that consider the minority language like a secret treasure to hold and protect. It's great to hear hip hop in Sardu or in Celtic or in Catalan. It's fantastic to see the new subcultural world develop so many ways of re redefining the relationship with what is the sense of identity. Last but not least, Fin commissions deal every day with the sense of inclusion and sustainability. Here we have some fellows coming from Valle d'Aosta, from um, Trentino and other parts of Italy, Friuli, places where the minority language has often been sort of marginalized as one of the ways of being, being you know, representatives of specific territories, specific needs. Well, we think that this project is the best example of how you build a European identity in a moment where our coasts, our beaches, have to be inclusive. In a moment in which the boundaries are already broken, now it's the time to really build together a new sense of identity. And the only way to make it successful, and I think this is why we will struggle as much as we can to reinforce not the visibility of the project, but the ability of making it really viral, is to put the institution in front of the fact that things are already happening, not only at the boundaries, but also in our school desks with our relationship between teenagers and volunteers that are working at incredible levels. So thank you guys for building this and we think it's gonna go on and on and on. Thank you, Navina, and thank you to Regione Sardegna because it, we need it, don't leave, don't leave us. Um, for, I, I want to tell you this, uh, we, we presented a new application to Creative Europe this year to, uh, we, we, the project actually expanded to 20 different countries and unfortunately we have not been selected but we are going on anyway, but of course uh, looking for 100% 100% of, of the, the money to cover cost is much more difficult than looking for the 40% because Creative Europe would have covered 60%. If you are interested in any way to bring the project in your country or to uh, being a coordinator or to or if you know any institution that could be involved uh, please let us know we 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 are going on but to be honest with you we don't know uh, at the moment in which way we know for sure that we are bringing the project in Australia because we've been asked to expand that and to start it also in Australia we know for sure that we are going on in some countries like Italy, like the UK, and uh, probably Ireland, probably Spain, and also because after the first edition, we uh, and that was clearly stating in the application, we we had already the the support and anyway the uh, availability of 2,000 secondary schools in the UK, 700 in Spain, and 400 in uh, in Ireland, and. Uh, um, 200 in Hungary, so we'll, we'll find a way to go on because, of course, this was a, a sort of a pilot project. We had more or less 2,000 students, but the, in the numbers could be huge in the next edition. So uh, please be uh, our uh, promoter in your country because we all think that this is a wonderful project and uh, also because all schools that actually, who actually, which actually took part confirm that they want to be involved for the next edition, so uh, we, we, I think we did rather well. Thank you so much, thank you for your patience. Eight, uh, 6.30 tonight for food and drinks and an award. Thank you.